Um, okay, so I finished Midnight Tides. I finished it way faster than I thought I would. I thought I would take the weekend to see it out, but I didn't. It took me like two more days <laughs> to finish it since the last, uh, since, since, it took like two days to read part four because it was so good. It was so intense. So much happened at the end where certain characters that I love got some really, really, really big reveals. Um, the world is, is, getting fleshed out more like I'm getting more information about the magic and how it works and so many different things that are really really exciting for me uh it definitely it was just such a big ending I feel like I can't say anything because it's part four in book five so I feel like I can't say anything but it was a very very satisfying end. I know y'all want more out of these spoiler chats, but what do you say at the end of this spoiler free? I'm really excited to see where this takes the world from here. I don't know and I don't know if the next book, I don't know where what region we're going to be in, what timeline we're going to be in, who what characters we're going to follow, I don't know. But this was my favorite Malazan book so far. This was my favorite Malazan book so far. It was the most readable one. I loved the characters. I loved the reveals. I loved so much that happened in this book. Oh my goodness. I need to go back over my notes. I need to get some thoughts together so that we can do a spoiler talk, so that we can have a satisfying discussion, because I know some of y'all don't love the spoiler-free, you know, very broad feelings more so than discussions. So I need to get my, my, my notes together. I don't know when the video is, it's definitely going up this month, but beyond that, I have a lot of collecting of thoughts to do. I did start Lone Woman, which uh, I started it on audiobook, and so far, so very good. It's, I just did part one, this is split into three parts, it's very short, it's under 300 pages, and it's split into three parts. So it'll be a breeze to get through immediately after the chunker of Malazan. So I did start that and part one has been excellent. It's uh, mystery horror is the vibes that I'm getting. Um, our protagonist starts off by burning her house as well as the bodies of her family members that have just died. And she's carrying along this massive trunk that she's very possessive over and that she needs to keep with her and holds a lot of mysteries and holds a lot of her secrets and she's taking it across the country and so far this author is doing an amazing job of making it withholding information from us without it being annoying without it being like oh my goodness you're just trying to drag out this mystery so far it's just a lot of eerie strange a lot of questions and little clues for us to try to piece together a lot a lot of questions so far the suspense is written very very well so super excited about that one super super hopeful about that one welcome to the vlog didn't like it. I promise you no one is more disappointed in this than me. The last clip where I talked about it I was pretty brief I was pretty quick because Corey had just come home and I knew that it was gonna get noisy in a second because him coming inside and everything and so I just wanted to kind of quickly give you my initial impressions and because I was so positive that I was gonna come back and do more gushing so I just kind of rushed that but now I wish I had taken my time <laughs> because I really really loved part one I was so in on part one it was so the suspense was written really well the very slow plodding through the setup was written very engrossing the prose is beautiful the the general intrigue was all there and I was at the end of part one I was completely 100% on board then part two happened and I was far less on board. And then part three happened and I just didn't like it. And I'm so sad because it was such a strong start. 
one of the main problems that I had was with it was the same thing that I said about the Nightmare Man that I read at the beginning of this year and that was that so many different characters and so many different plot lines and mysteries just kept getting piled on just another one and another one and another one and another one with every chapter without things really getting solved we weren't getting enough answers we were just piling on more questions and and more characters the amount of characters introduced that it became so convoluted I love trying to solve mysteries I love not straight mysteries but a mystery within a plot like this was a horror that had a mystery to it I love trying to figure that out and I love trying to piece things together but this had so many open threads that at some point I was just like forget it just I threw all the threads up in the air and I was like I'm not gonna keep trying to keep track of all this at the same time, the characters that were introduced, at first it was intriguing and it was like, what is this character story? What is that character doing? What is this? But there was so little development for these characters and they would be in the story and then out of it a second later, some of them would. I don't know, I don't wanna just bash this book because I do think that it was excellently written and I did read, after I finished the book, I read some early reviews. This is a new release. I read some early reviews and people are so positive on this book. So I want you to know that the early reception of this book is overwhelmingly positive. So I don't want to, if you were interested in picking this up, I don't wanna be the reason you don't. Still check it out if you had initially planned on reading it and now you hear that I'm not, that I didn't jive with it, still check it out because again, early reception is overwhelmingly positive. I just gotta be honest with you about my reception of it and I just didn't like it. I felt like there were a lot of things just being piled on one after another and I didn't think that it ended up being satisfying. A lot of them stayed hanging there. A lot of them didn't get resolved and the things that did get resolved, I didn't, love the way it all turned out. Plus this is a survival story. This is a true thing that happened in history. Women going across the country, traveling across country to to homestead. And it's like, it's a really fascinating piece of history and, and a, a piece of history where these women had to survive. And I just feel like th that part of the story didn't get any of the focus and that would have been a really interesting thing to add to the suspense and the tension and it just kind of got glossed over for the most part. I mean she was definitely very grateful when she was handed food but the survival side of it, the homesteading side of it was kind of just dressing. It was garnish on the plate. It wasn't the story. It just didn't work for me for a lot of different reasons. Again, early reception very positive so don't let me turn you off to it but that unfortunately that is that is the way I felt about it. I just it just didn't it what it didn't work for me. Excellently written as far as prose go. But as far as the story coming together, unfortunately, it wasn't mine. However, I have started a book that I love. Don Quixote, a classic that I've had on my shelf for a very long time and have put off for a very long time. One, because it's really thick, and two, because I've always been I've always heard make sure you get a good translation this is a Spanish novel and originally written in Spanish and some translations are apparently really poor some are really good and that's also kind of intimidated me but you know Google exists so I looked it up and the one that I've had on my shelf for a long time is generally considered good John Ruthford translated this one and it's so good I want to tell you the setup of this because it's so funny so the setup of this is that our protagonist Don Quixote whose name we're not entirely sure what his original name is, but that's his adopted name after he decided that he was gonna go off on this adventure. Um, he had read too many fiction novels, is essentially what it comes down to, too many adventure stories, and lost his mind because of it. <laughs> and so this is a story about a truly insane man going off on adventures, some of which are like fighting and seeing a flock of sheep and being determined this is an army and I must fight them and then running off to fight a flock of sheep and getting plummeled, pummeled in the process and then another instance probably one you've heard of because it's the most iconic I think scene in Don Quixote where he sees windmills and he's convinced these are giants with six feet long arms and I must fight them so he goes to fight them and gets pummeled that's how a lot of these things go but also his squire Sancho is so funny where he's constantly imploring Don Quixote telling him 
Sir, I, I assure you, that's a windmill. Please don't fight it. And Don Quixote, because uh, because his his squire is beneath him class wise, he really just doesn't take anything he says seriously, and because he's insane, he doesn't take anything he says seriously, and just goes off and continues on his merry adventures. But anyway, this is the description we get of him. In short, our our Hidalgo was soon so absorbed in these books that his nights were spent reading from dusk till dawn. His days were dawn till dusk until the lack of sleep and the excess of reading withered his brain and he went mad. Everything he read in his books took possession of his imagination. Enchantments, fights, battles, challenges, wounds, sweet nothings, love affairs, storms, and impossible absurdities. The idea that this whole fabric of famous fabrications was real so, es so established itself in his mind that no history in the world was truer for him. This is a comedy. It's satire fiction. I love satire fiction. I don't know whose fault it is. I won't be taking the blame. But somebody needs to be blamed for me not picking this up sooner. If I had known that this was a comedy, I would have started it much sooner. I'm 147 pages in, and I love it. pages into Don Quixote, so making some good progress. I probably am not going to have this finished next week either because it's a chunker and I have other books that I want to be reading too. So I'll probably take my time with this one kind of like I did with Malazan and just do weekly check-ins until it's done, but I'm still loving it. It's still hilarious and I'm finding the themes and the discussions to actually still be really relevant and really interesting. A lot of discussions on the way Don Quixote views the world based off of class and based off of what you have and expectations and a lot of reality versus um, versus imaginings or, or internal desires. And I don't know, there's just a lot going on here that is worth discussing and reflecting on, but also just so funny. It's just really funny around every corner. It's so goofy. And even just the narration of it is so funny. Um, the the storyteller or the person that's trying to collect information on Don Quixote and the way he's accumulating it, and even he can't really be sure what's true and what's not. I don't know. It's just a lot of fun. I'm having a great time with it. I did read two more volumes of Yona, and the first volume I read this week, I loved. <laughs> Again, seeing characters progress, seeing things move forward. Uh, the romance in this series has kind of always gotten on my nerves because it's very reliant on miscommunications. It's very reliant on characters just not speaking to one another and I know they're teenagers but my goodness and very reliant on like I th think conversations are cut off at the very last moment and then and then assumptions are made and just a lot of tropes I don't like in a, in a a part an element of stories that I already don't drive with that much so just in general very frustrating this volume finally started addressing things people finally started talking it was amazing I was so high on it and then the next volume brought me way back down because we just kept up with our old shenanigans with the miscommunication, with the not talking, with the ridiculous drawn out will they, won't they in the most boring way possible. I know, I'm so sorry. You Yona fans have been so happy that I've been so high on this series for a while when it was really not in the beginning. So I'm just very sad to leave you on a sour note in this particular vlog, but I just did not enjoy volume 27 as far as all that goes. Um, however, plot-wise, actually plot-wise 27 wasn't great either. It was kind of just repeating things that have already been established. But it was also trying to move things into place so that hopefully we can move forward in the next volume. So yeah, I'm kind of down on 27. I just really didn't enjoy that volume. But I'm hopeful that now we can move forward and uh, still the way she writes action is amazing. The way she writes the happy hungry bunch is amazing and I just wish as the plot continues to escalate and as 
political things continue to get tangled up, which is all really well done, we're, while all that's happening, we're kind of pulling away from the Happy Hungry Bunch and not spending enough time on them. And that makes me sad. So give me some more interactions with our amazing characters and I'll be happy. Anyway, that's what I read this week. I finished Malazan, book five, Midnight Tides. I, oh, I, oh, I read Lone Women. <sighs> Man. Again, don't let me dissuade you because it, a lot of people love it. It just was a bumski for me. And I started Don Quixote which has been excellent. I hope you've had a great reading week. Thanks for chatting with me. I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel, Mondays and Fridays on the main channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.